Hi, I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Flux integration or F-Flux integration for Home Assistant, which helps us to adjust the color temperature of the lights in our smart home throughout the day to reduce blue light exposure and especially at nighttime. The results of this process might be a little bit difficult to demonstrate on video, but we'll at least get the setup done. And if it doesn't suit our needs, we can always remove it. So while I roll the intro, why don't you take a moment to subscribe? And if you hit the bell icon, you'll also get a notification when I release new videos. And that's normally every week. While you're at it, if you like what I do here and you want to help to support the channel, there's a few different ways to do that in the video description, including affiliate links to purchase some of the home automation gadgets that I've reviewed in the past and other ways to support the channel, like signing up for NordVPN using my affiliate link or supporting the channel directly through my buy me a coffee link. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. So there's been a lot of information on the internet circulating for a few years about blue light causing sleep disruption and there may actually be some scientific studies backing up these claims. The TLDR around these theories is that the blue spectrum light hitting the retinas at the back of our eyes is a signal to the brain that it's daytime and not to produce any melatonin. That's the sleep hormone. This can, according to these studies, lead to insomnia, poor sleep quality, and general tiredness. And of course, in modern society, we're constantly bombarded by blue spectrum light, whether it's from cool white fluorescent lights in the office, staring at a computer screen all day long, or lying in bed scrolling endlessly through social media on our phones or tablets. And this has led to the rise of gadgets like blue light blocking glasses and even computer software coming out in an attempt to mitigate or limit the exposure to blue wavelengths of light. Now, several years ago, a piece of software called F.Lux or Flux was released for macOS. It's a piece of donationware software that adjusts the white balance of your Mac's display throughout the day based on your location in an attempt to provide a natural cycle to your exposure to blue light and help your circadian rhythms stay normal. It'll start from a cool white with a fair amount of blue wavelength light mixed in in the mornings in order to stimulate wakefulness and alertness through to an extremely warm, almost orange white balance in the evenings. Now, not long after Flux came out, Apple introduced Night Shift into macOS, which provides the same functionality natively in the operating system, though fans of Flux will tell you that it is limited and totally not the same, but that is a deeper discussion outside the realms of this video. So it stands to reason then, if light from a screen can have this effect on our bodies, light from any artificial light source can have the same effect. So enter the Flux integration for Home Assistant. Many smart lights now offer color temperature settings. So using the Flux Home Assistant integration, we should then be able to achieve the same thing that the Mac OS app does for the computer screen all throughout our home pushing a cool white and with a heavy blue spectrum light during the day to promote wakefulness. And then during twilight hours, when our bodies are supposed to be winding down, we can then remove that blue spectrum to promote melatonin production and restfulness. So let's take a look at setting up the integration. Now it's worth mentioning that Flux hasn't been updated in a while. So setting it up does require modifying the configuration.yaml file. I will put a link to the Home Assistant documentation in the video description so that you can refer to it. And there's a couple of important keys that we need to look out for in the YAML configuration file. The most important here is the lights that we want to use. Uh, and this is the only required key in the configuration, but there's some others that we might want to consider as well. 
for example, we might want to consider the start time, and that is the time where we want the adjustments to begin. There's the stop time, the time where we want the adjustments to stop. The start color temp, which is optional, and the default color temp for the starting point is 4000 Kelvin. And there's also a sunset color temp, which is uh, optional, but a default of 3000 Kelvin. And a stop color temp of 1900 Kelvin is the default. Uh, but again, you can set that to whatever you'd like. There's some other things in here like brightness. You can set a constant brightness of the lights. Uh, so besides the color temperature, brightness can be adjusted unless a value is specified here. Uh, you can disable the brightness adjustment as well. The default there is false. Uh, there's the mode, and this mode might actually be uh, fairly important to do. So select how the color temperature is passed to the lights. You can either use XY, MyRed, or RGB. And there's the transition. So you've also got a transition time here in seconds for the light changes and a high value might not be supported by all light models. And in fact, transitions not necessarily supported by all light models either. Uh, and then the interval. So uh, the default transition is 30 seconds. The default interval is 30 seconds as well. So the frequency in seconds at which the lights should be updated. So from the documentation page, I'm actually just going to copy uh, this detail here, so the sample configuration.yaml entry, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to head back over to my Home Assistant instance here, and down the left hand side, I'm going to click on Studio Code Server. And I'm just going to open up a Developer Tools tab as well, uh, because I'll use that to uh, demonstrate a couple of different things. Uh, as we go through. So now that we've got Studio Code Server here, uh, if we already had a switch domain in here, we would want to uh, add these details underneath that switch domain. But instead, I'm just going to uh, paste in uh, the details we copied from the configuration page in the Home Assistant site. I'm going to make a couple of changes here. Firstly, I want to change lights dot, and I'll go dining room lights, which is this one here. I'll also go lights dot lounge room lights, and we'll go light dot kitchen lights. Uh, so we'll add those three there. Uh, we've got a start time in here at the moment of 7 a.m. We've got a stop time of 11 p.m. The start color temp is 4000 Kelvin. And so from our developer tools, I'm just going to call a service of light.turn on on the dining room lights. And I'm going to set the color temperature to 4000 Kelvin. Uh, and it might already be fairly close to that. Uh, and uh, I'll go grab a sheet of white paper. So I've set the dining room lights to 4000 Kelvin using that call service. And I'll just hold up this sheet of white paper and you might be able to see that. It's a little bit on the cooler side. Uh, it's going to, the camera might not be picking it up particularly well. Uh, but if I go back to our Studio Code server, the sunset color temp is 3000 Kelvin. So let's see what that looks like. Uh, I'll put 3000 and call the service. It might not have come through particularly well, uh, but that's definitely a bit warmer. Uh, it's worth mentioning that uh, the Kelvin color temperature works uh, the inverse of you might expect. Warmer light is a lower number for whatever reason. And the stop color temperature in the, con the default configuration is 1900. Let's head back over to the developer tools and we'll see if we can get 1900. We'll call that. Uh, it doesn't like 1900. Let's try 2000. And that's gone very orange. I'm, again, I'm not sure if this is coming through uh, on camera. Uh, we might actually be getting a lot of spillover from my studio lights here, so it might not be working as anticipated. So we can go from 4000 to 
uh, 2000. I might even see what maybe 6500 looks like. Uh, so I'm not sure if you can uh, make that out on camera, uh, but 6500, the lights look very, very blue. It's not bad, uh, but it's certainly uh, quite blue. So I might actually set this stop color temperature to 2000. I'll set the start color temperature to 6500. Uh, and I might set the sunset color temperature to, uh, let's make that 2500. And uh, I'm going to remove this brightness field. I'm going to leave disable brightness adjust as true. Now for my lights, I'm not sure how this is going to work, whether it's going to be X, Y, RGB or my red. So I'm going to set this to my red. Um, you could probably choose something else if you like, like RGB, or you could just leave it at X, Y. Uh, I'm going to try out my red uh, and we'll try this out for a couple of days. And if it works, then fantastic. If not, uh, then uh, I will change this setting and see what happens. So uh, with this setup for the dining lounge room and kitchen lights, I'm going to save uh, the file using Command S on my Mac keyboard here. I'm going to uh, open developer tools here and I'm going to check the configuration. Uh, and uh, we've got green configuration that says configuration will not prevent Home Assistant from starting. And I'm going to restart Home Assistant. So now that Home Assistant's restarted, we've got this Fluxus switch entity available in Home Assistant and I've turned that on. And if we wanted to not have the color temperatures adjusting throughout the day, we could turn that off as well. And you can automate this switch if you need to. So with Home Assistant restarted and this switch turned on, the only thing that remains is to really kind of wait and see if it worked. And unfortunately, I've not had this set up for long enough to really capture a proper time lapse. So I'm going to provide a simulation of what this might look like over the course of a full day. And to do that in developer tools, I'm going to call the service of turn on at 6,500 Kelvin. And then I'll set the sunset of 2,500 Kelvin. Uh, and I might just change this transition to three seconds uh, so that it will be a bit faster. And I will call that service and we can watch the lights change. And hopefully on camera that's coming through as to how much warmer that is. Uh, and uh, finally for the night time, I'll change this to 2000. This is where it's going to stop. I'll tap call service and it goes very orange indeed. Very hard to see on camera. Hopefully that comes through. So that's adding the flux integration to Home Assistant to have the color temperature of your smart lights adjust throughout the day to support a natural circadian rhythm by reducing your exposure to blue spectrum light in the twilight hours while also supporting wakefulness during daytime hours by adding some blue light back into the mix. It does remain to be seen whether this provides any benefit at all for us and even if it operates as expected. But what I can tell you is that even if it doesn't really make that much of a difference for us in terms of our sleeping cycles, it is still pretty nice to have these lights adjust to the color temperature that's outside throughout the rest of the day. Regardless on whether you believe color temperature has an effect on sleep and wakefulness, I still think this integration might be worth a look. In my opinion, a warmer white is going to be a lot more comfortable at night anyway, and definitely is where my lighting tends to default to because let's face it, I need the lights more when it's darker outside. While a cooler white is certainly in my experience, definitely going to be better for when you're working especially if you're needing to see fine detail, such as if you're working on a circuit board or uh, doing repair work. Let me know your thoughts on the Flux integration in the comments section down below. That's all we have for this video, and I do hope that it helped you in some way in your home automation journey. 
Be sure to drop a comment down below with home automation ideas you'd like to see me cover in a future video. And don't forget to follow Hivemind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like and help the YouTube algorithm recommend it to more viewers. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing now. And while you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll receive a notification when I release a new video, and that's normally every week. If you are currently in the market for a VPN provider, there's also an affiliate link for NordVPN in the video description. I chose to partner with NordVPN because they had the best infrastructure of any of the VPN providers I looked into. They have a strict no logs policy and servers all over the planet. And on top of that, they've got apps for just about every platform, including Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, and Android. So no matter what platform you're using, you can protect your sensitive personal information while you browse the web. So get a VPN today and use my link below to sign up for NordVPN. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel directly, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description down below. Contributions that you make through buy me a coffee are put towards making more and hopefully better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hivemind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.